our season of sheltering in place started with a God-appointed reading in our lectionary, Psalm 23. God gave us Psalm 23 as a reassurance that He is our Good Shepherd in every dark valley. We aren't finished making our way through this dark valley that we have been in. It may be a while yet, but things are starting to change. There's more traffic on our streets. Businesses are making preparations to reopen. We as a church are making careful plans for how and when we will restart in-person services. We're beginning to make preparations to exit the dark valley. Many of us are asking, when can life return to normal? This was also the question the disciples were asking after Jesus' death. In our resurrection encounter this morning, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, gives the disciples and us a powerful lesson on trying to return to a normal life and how to follow him in the days ahead. Before we jump into this gospel reading, I want to give you a little bit of the context of what's happening because we're jumping in right in the middle of a story. More than a week after Jesus' resurrection from the dead, Peter and several other disciples leave Jerusalem and head home for, to Galilee. And when they get back to Galilee, Peter and the other disciples return to their old profession. They go fishing. They're restarting their normal lives after Jesus turned their lives upside down. But Peter and the disciples fish all night, these professional fishermen, they fish all night with no luck. That is, until a man shows up and tells them to cast their net on the other side of the boat. Is this story sounding familiar yet? They do it, and they catch such a large haul of fish that they can't actually get the net into their boat. At this moment, they realize that the man on the shore is Jesus. Peter, in his excitement and eagerness to be reunited with Jesus, jumps out of the boat and swims to shore. The dripping wet Peter is greeted by Jesus cooking them all breakfast on the shore over a fire. And that's where our passage picks up this morning. Verse 15, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Notice that Jesus addresses him as Simon, son of John, not Peter. Simon, son of John, was Peter's old name, his old identity. It was who he was before Jesus had called him three years ago, when he was just some fisherman on a boat in the Sea of Galilee. But since that time, Peter and Jesus had shared a lot of life together. They lived together. They traveled together. They ate together. They slept on the side of the road together. They healed the sick together. They raised the dead together. They did everything together for three years. And Jesus had given Simon a new name, Peter, the Rock. But Jesus doesn't call him by that name, not today. Jesus calls him by his old name. It would be like me walking into my front door one day and formally extending my hand to my wife and addressing her with her maiden name saying, hello, Megan Hussey, a pleasure to meet you. Three times, Jesus says to Peter, Simon, son of John. Why is this significant? Why is this important? Because three times, Peter claimed he did not know Jesus. 
before the cock crowed, Peter denied knowing Jesus three times. And so three times, Jesus addresses Peter as if he does not know him. Ouch! No wonder Peter was grieved. But even more to the point, three times, Jesus asks Peter if he loves him. This is the real heart of this resurrection encounter. The first time Jesus specifically asks is verse 15. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? What is Jesus referring to here? What are the these he is asking about? Well, there's two things Jesus is referring to. Earlier in the gospel, gospel Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Do you remember that, Peter? So Jesus is saying to Peter, do you really love me more than these other disciples love me? Because you weren't going to be like them. You were the one that wasn't going to deny me. You swore you weren't, weren't. Do you really love me more than these other disciples? But then there's a deeper question that Jesus is asking. Remember, just before this conversation with Jesus, Peter had returned to the normal life he had before he met Jesus, back to fishing. And so Jesus is asking here, do you love me more than these fish? Do you love me more than catching fish? What Jesus is really asking Peter is this, do you love me more than your old, comfortable, normal life? Peter tried to return to being a fisherman, but Jesus was calling Peter to be a fisher of men. What has happened over the past 50 days for us is that we have had many of the places where we get our identity from stripped away from us. All we are left with is ourself and Jesus. And this morning, Jesus is asking you and me a simple question. Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than your old, normal, comfortable life? Until we know who we are and whose we are, we can't be trusted with loving others. Only when we love Jesus first are we able to love others rightly. That's why Jesus asks Peter if he loves him before he tells him to feed his sheep. If Peter is going to be a leader in the church, if he's going to have any hope of feeding the sheep, he will have to love Jesus first. After all, they are Jesus' sheep. They're not Peter's sheep. Jesus says, feed my sheep. Jesus is the real shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Now, this isn't just true in Christian leadership. It's true in all of our lives. We must love Jesus first, accept him as our shepherd, and then, and only then, are we ready to go where Jesus leads us. We have to be transformed into humble people if we want the shepherd to lead us to green pastures and still waters. Just like Peter needed to be transformed into a humble disciple, a humble sheep if he was going to have Jesus as his shepherd. This passage is sometimes called the restoration of Peter. But that isn't really accurate. Peter isn't being restored to what he was before. Peter before was absolutely 100% confident that he would never deny Jesus. Even when Jesus explicitly tells Peter that he will deny him three times. Old Peter couldn't accept that about himself. Peter deny Jesus? No way! That's not who I am. Peter was in self-denial when what he needed to learn was how to deny himself. Peter now 
as he stands on that shore with Jesus, is humbled. And now, only now, is he ready to care for God's sheep. It isn't enough for Peter to be restored. He himself must be transformed. Peter is being transformed into the image of the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. St. Chrysostom, in his commentary on this passage, notes, Do you see how Peter has become better and more sober, no longer self-willed and contradicting? Peter could not go back to being a leader until he had first become a sheep under the Good Shepherd. It is only when Peter finally says, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. It is only at that moment that he is ready to start following Jesus again. He's been humbled. He will never be the same again. The same is true for us. We can't go back to normal life. We will come out of this season profoundly changed. In fact, we shouldn't even try to go back to normal. I found myself wishing that. Couldn't we just return to normal? Couldn't it be like it used to be? Sure, there are things that I've appreciated about this season. More time with my wife and kids, more home-cooked meals, cheaper gas. But a part of me still wants to return to the days before coronavirus. Maybe you have found yourself wishing that life would just go back to normal. But that isn't reality. We can't go back. And more importantly, that would mean letting go of all the important ways that God has transformed us through this season. We cannot go back. We must go forward. Peter's call forward was a difficult one. Jesus says to him in verse 18, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by, by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, Follow me. Follow me. The way forward for Peter was to follow the Good Shepherd. And the way forward for us today is to follow the Good Shepherd. There may be more dark valleys ahead. There certainly was for Peter, who was crucified like Jesus. But it is only under the guidance and direction of the Good Shepherd that we will ever make it to an abundant life. But even more importantly, God has formed in us and in our families as, as we have traveled through this dark valley. He's formed us and transformed us in unique ways as we've traveled through this season. And we cannot let those transformations go. As we prepare to exit the dark valley, take stock of the ways God has transformed you for the new life ahead. The old life is gone, but a new life is ahead. I was recently helped along by something that Angela Jones sent to me. She sent me a set of questions that she has been wrestling with herself as she charts the way forward and takes stock of what God did in the season. And I want to share with you some of the questions that I found very helpful. What patterns have I created that I love in this season? What patterns has my family created that we love? What patterns have I let go of that I do not want to pick back up? What patterns has our family let go of that I do not want to pick back, back up? We'll post those questions on our blog so you can see them and think about them and reflect on them. And I want to encourage you this week to think about this. We are at a transition point to reflect back and say, how has God transformed me and my family for the season ahead? We cannot go back. We cannot get sucked back into yearning for the life that is past. 
We can't go back. But by God's grace and under the guidance of the Good Shepherd, we can and we will go forward. Amen.